Welcome to this quick tip video on eftformats.ne, how to create a new format and update existing EFT formats. My name's Anne from Orchid Systems. In this quick tip video, we're going to run through the formats.ne and have a look at where you need a user formats.ne, the file structure in the formats.ne for the EFT bank file, what values and validations you can include in the EFT file, what formulas are provided that you can use the values for in the EFT file, and how to format the values in the EFT file. When you install EFT, you will get the current latest formats in the formats.ini file, and this is installed into the Sage Programs directory, into the ELXXA directory, depending what version you're using. If you need to do a customization, you should copy the required bank format into a user formats.ini and then that file will be used in creating the EFT file. When using the create EFT file function, EFT first looks for a user formats.ini and looks for the specified file format in that file and if it finds it, it will use that format. If not, it will look in the formats.ini and look for the EFT file format in that file. If you are using Sage 300 customization directories, then this logic is extended to the customization directories. First, it looks for the format in a user formats.ini in the customization directory. If it's not found, it looks for the user formats.ini in the programs directory. If that's not found, it will use the formats.ini in the customization directory if it finds it. If that's not found, it will use the formats.ini in the programs directory. In the EFT formats.ini or user formats.ini, an individual file format is defined by its file format name in square brackets. And all the rows below the file format name in square brackets and the next file format name in square brackets consists of the definition for that EFT file format. The EFT file format consists of two sections. The first section where you define your values, your validations, any extra fields you want to use, any screen tooltips that you want to define. And then you define your rows. And the rows that you can include in the EFT file are header rows, which is one per file, batch header, which is one per batch, AP payment batch, AR receipt batch, or AR ref refund batch, detail rows, which is one per payment record, AP payment, AR receipt, or AR refund payment record. Then you have a batch footer, which is one per AP payment batch, AR receipt batch, or AR refund batch, and then a footer row, which is one per file. And these are included in the file using header AP, AR, PR for payroll, batch header AP and AR, detail AP, AR, detail PR, batch footer AP, AR, footer AP, footer AR, footer PR. And you can have multiples of these rows by using header 1 AP, header 2 AP, etc. For the values you can include in the EFT file, off the EFT bank's record you can include the bank name, the bank branch number and the bank account number. You can also include the AP payment reference, the AR payment reference and the payroll payment reference. And you have an optional for extra fields, bank extra 1, 2, 3 and 4 that you can turn on. You can also use any field from the BKACCT view and from the EL Bank view. These fields are sometimes called source name, source BSB, source extra one, etc. And to see what the field names are, you can use the object model for the appropriate views. For the EFT vendor, customer and employee fields, you can use the DEST account name, DEST bank name, DEST BSB uh, for all the fields from the destination of the payment. You've also got an optional 50 extra fields that you can turn on, DEST extra 1, 2, 3, up to 50. And then for vendors and payments, you can use the ELVEN, APVEN, APBTA, APTCR, and APOBL views. 
For customers in AR receipts, you can use ELCAS, ARCAS, ARBTA, ARTCP, and AROBL. And for refunds, you can use ELCAS, ARCAS, and AR Refund View. And for employees, you can use the ELEMP and the XP, X being for either Canadian or US payroll check and XP employee table. You can also use fields of the batch. The most popular one used here is the batch number. And in common services, you can use the common services address, contact, company name, state tax number, and you can define your own fields. So if, for example, you want to have Bank Extra 1 as your company ID, you can declare yourself a variable saying company ID and then say which field it is, Bank Extra 1, and I'll go through the formatting of the field later. Or if you want to include the applied invoice details to the payment, you can build yourself a variable. For example, AP Invoice it, it consists of the invoice number, the invoice date, the invoice description, and the invoice net amount. And then that can be used in the EFT file to get the applied details in the file. And with the tool tips, you can have a tip which describes, which is a help tip when you click on the field, it can tell the operator what needs to be entered in that particular field. And finally, you can do some validations, particularly on the, the account number size and the branch number size. So you specify the minimum number of characters and the maximum number of characters that are valid. And if creating an EFT file, the in this example, the branch size is less than eight, it would give an error message and wouldn't create the file. You can also validate amount fields to being a number. If you include D in the formatting and that field was not numeric, you would get an error. There are some predefined formulas to assist you with some of the values that you need in the file. You can get the number of records, you can include the record count, and you can include the number of payment entries, which might not match the number of records. You can include the amount or the amount in cents or the negative amount if you want to negate the amount for refunds. You can include the transaction total formatted in cents or the transaction total. You can build up AP invoice applied details and then by including AP invoices, it will include those fields for each and every applied invoice. And for hash totals and particular formatting needed by some of the formats, you can include the hash total or the Nedbank hash total or the New Zealand hash total or the Natcha hash total and the variable number of nines and size of the file that is included in the Natcha file. You can also include the Julian date and the actual file name in the file as some banks need that. And you've also got a number of functions to help you calculate the record count if you perhaps want to increase the record count more often than is actually happening. You've got five different record counts. You might want to count the batched count and have a record count. You can also do evaluations, multiplications, additions, and hash totals yourself. We also have a function called replace where you can replace special characters with spaces, for example. And you can get fields, trim fields, and work out the MD5 or SH256 uh, calculations. Numeric fields can be formatted, left or right justified. They can be formatted to include decimal places with a comma separator or a full stop as the separator. You can also include the amount in cents if they do not want a separator between the decimal point. And you can right or left justify the amount field over the number of characters that you want and either blank fill or zero fill the number of spaces. And for strings, you can left or right justify them space fill them or to the left or to the right and you can convert them into uppercase if needed. And for formatting dates you can use the date and then YYMMDD including or excluding slashes as you need to. 
And there's also a special calculation to get a date in the Julian format, which is a five-digit number from a base date. So you can use at the date with Julian afterwards to get the Julian format. Looking at all that information with regards to one specific format, I normally add a new object to my desktop, a program, and point it through to the formats.any file. And then you can just double click to open up the formats.any. And searching for the NACHA format that we've been using so far, the name gives the description that you see for the format when you use it for in the finder. Here we're setting the bank branch size to between 8 and 9 digits long and the account size between 1 and 17 digits long. We've relabeled the branch number RT number and the account number we've left staying as account number and the account name we're labeling account name. On the bank, we've turned on one extra field, Bank Extra 1, and we've called it the company ID. We've labeled the customer payment reference as Transcode 273747 and configured and labeled the tooltip accordingly. And for EFT vendors, the standard reference field has been relabeled Transaction Code 2232. Tooltip has been configured accordingly. And we've created a variable for the bank extra one, which was our company ID, and we formatted it over 10 characters, and we have zero filled to the left if less than 10 digits were entered. We've said that the label for AP payment reference is not used, and the label for AR payment reference is not used. And for customer extra one, we've labeled the field refund transaction code 22 or 32. So refunds are a payment, so we need to know what type of account the deposit is going into. And again, specified the same tip for the refund transaction code. And similarly, for the employee payment reference, we need the transaction code 22 or 32. And again, we've got a tool tip for that as well. Semicolon indicates a comment, so this is just a comment telling you how the company digit needs to be formatted. And here we've got the row definitions for accounts receivables, so that's for our direct debits, accounts payable, so that's for our payments, for payroll, and for our refunds. So they're all very similar, but I'll go through accounts payable as our example. So the accounts payable example has two header rows, AP1 and AP2. The first row starts with 101, it's got a blank space, then the bank branch number, which is nine digits, the company ID, which is 10 digits, today's date in the format year, year, month, month, day, day, the time in the format HHMM, the file ID modifier, which is the file number, then it's a hard-coded text 094101, the bank's name, the bank account number, and then some spaces and a carriage return line feed. The second line of the header is 5220, the bank account name over 16 characters, a bunch of spaces, company ID, CCD, the description of the batch, Today's date again, YYMMDD, the entry date of the first payment, YYMMDD, a few spaces, one, the bank's branch number, and line number one. Then for the details, so this row here happens for each and every payment that is made, we increase the record count by one, the first character is a six, then the DEST reference, so the reference of the vendor's EFT record. The DEST BSB, which is the vendor's branch number. The vendor's account number, over 17 characters. And then the amount in cents, with the total length being 10 characters. Then the ID of the vendor, over 15 characters. The vendor's account name, over 22 characters 
a couple of spaces, zero, the bank's branch number over eight characters, and then get the record count. So it would be two in the first instance and would be uh, the number over seven characters and then a carriage return line feed. And then we'd get that row, the same formatted row for the second payment, third payment, and so on. And then we've got a footer for AP. The first, we've got two footer rows, but the first one is 8220, the total number of entries, which is the number of payments in the batch over six characters, the Natcha hash total, which is a total calculated on the account numbers and the amounts, a whole lot of zeros, then the total transactions in cents, this time formatted over 12 characters, the company ID, a whole lot of spaces, the bank branch number, and 0001, carriage return line feed, and then the footer of the file, which starts 9009 with these zeros 1, then the ACH block count divided by 10, so it's the number of records divided by 10 approximately, the number, total number of entries over 8 characters, the hash total over 10 characters, some zeros, the transaction total in cents over 12 characters, some spaces, carriage return line feed, and then Nutcher nines. And these nines are used to fill out the number of records to a set number of records um, divisible by 10. So depending on how many rows you've done, the remain, you know, if you've done one, there would be nine rows of nines. If you've done two, there'd be eight rows of nines, etc. And similarly for accounts receivable, but in this case, when we're saying DEST, it's now the EFT customer's record. And for payroll, when we're saying DEST, it's now the employee's uh, branch number. And for refunds, instead of it being a direct debit, it's a deposit which goes into the EFT customer's account. And here you can see an example of an AP payment file using the Nacho format. The first two rows are the header rows, and then we see two payment lines starting with six, and then the footer rows, followed by Nacho nines. If you have any further questions regarding EFT processing or the formats.ini, please go to our website, www.orchid.systems, and you will find more details on EFT processing. And in the knowledge base, you'll find more information on the formats.ini.